Here are five things you'll learn by starting a nonprofit. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss on the Budget. So I help people start their nonprofits, but just help navigate their startup journey in general, whether they're starting a nonprofit or a for-profit business. If you need help raising money for your nonprofit, comment join below and I'll send you a link for my private community where you can learn how to fundraise for your nonprofit. In this video, I'm gonna share five things, five ways you're gonna to have to level up as a nonprofit founder. A lot of people, when they start this journey, they have no idea what to expect. All they know is they wanna do something good. It's either you have like a vision in your life or a calling on your life, and you feel this nagging thing that won't let go and pushing you to do something bigger or to do something greater to help somebody. So uh, for a lot of people, that makes sense, but it's much harder to navigate the actual implementation of that to get to your vision. It's much harder to figure out where you're supposed to be or what you're supposed to be doing or what happens as a result of you starting your nonprofit, which is why I have this channel because I wanna build a community of people who can learn and grow from each other because there's so many people who withhold the information, but in this space, we wanna share what the experience is like. So in this video, I'm basically sharing five things that are gonna grow you up. Five things that you're just gonna to have to get better at that you're gonna learn along your nonprofit journey. And if you're in the middle of your journey and you're feeling like you don't have what it takes, or if you're feeling discouraged, please know that this only comes with time. This only comes with experience. And I want you to know that if you stick with it, you will get to this place where you'll have these skills. The first thing is how to lead. And I'm going to break this down because this is the biggest one or the biggest hump that people have to get over, but they don't realize they have to get over this hump. So let me ask you a question. You decided to start a nonprofit. What was the desire behind starting a nonprofit? For most people, the desire is not because you want to lead an organization, right? It's not because you want to be the boss. That's not the driving factor behind why you want to start. The driving factor for most people is that they see something in their community that they feel led to address. And no one else is really ringing the alarm and saying, hey, we need to do this or kind of stepping into that role. So you decide to step into that role. But that doesn't mean that you want to run a business. That just means that you want to help somebody. But having a nonprofit includes not just helping somebody, but also running a business. And for most people who start a nonprofit, their role is going to be the executive director. Their role is to lead the organization, but you have to accept that that's what you're there to do. Because a lot of people get comfortable with, oh, I just like dealing with the people. I just want to do the work. I don't want to worry about fundraising or paperwork or budgets or filling out grant applications. I don't want to have to deal with that. And that's a natural way to feel because who does, honestly? But it requires that of you. The role requires you to be that person to first of all, step back and strategically plan and have a vision for your organization. To see that it's more than just you doing things in your community, it's about how you're gonna be a staple in your community long-term. It's about how you're gonna position yourself in ways so that people see what you're doing and can elevate your mission and keep you going for years and years to come. It's really hard to stay around and be financially sustainable if you're not being strategic. So it requires a person, a leader, to say, I know if I meet these people or if we make this decision and work in this way, it's gonna pay off two years from now. Or I see down the pike that the economy is going this way or our community is heading this way, so we need to be prepared and have a service like this or make these relationships so we can weather that storm. Whatever that is, you have to have the vision and the foresight to prepare and plan for it. But a lot of people have to grow up into that role. The other big piece of being a leader is managing people. And this one is going to make or break you. If you are not willing to do the work to build relationships with your board and figure out how to navigate with their personalities and their needs and their wants and lead the organization, it's going to be a hard road for you. You're really going to have to learn how to, first of all, just build natural relationships with people, understand how to relate to them, how to engage with them, and to lead them in the direction that the organization is going. It's going to take skills to navigate really hard 
complex discussions or conversations or decisions that have to be made on behalf of the organization. But it takes a, a leader to be able to do that and to step into that role. So some of the biggest hurdles for people who are starting their new nonprofit is the board. And how you have those conversations with people who are not doing what they're supposed to do. They signed up for this, but somehow they fell off the face of the earth. And I talked to a lot of founders who they're sick about that conversation. They don't know what to do. They're frustrated. They are disappointed. They're depleted. But I want to encourage you, especially if you're in that moment right now, all this is doing is growing you up in your leadership space. It is preparing you for the many hard conversations and decisions that have to be made. And it's getting you ready for that point. And if you can't handle that now, you won't be able to handle a lot of the bigger stuff later. So embrace what you're experiencing right now, even though it feels uncomfortable and you don't want to have these kind of conversations or navigate these complex dynamics. It's giving you the muscle. It's helping you build the muscle to be able to have hard conversations, but move forward for what's best for your organization. So I said all that to say that one of the biggest skills you're going to learn by doing this is how to be a better leader. So embrace the process and just learn from it. Number two is the value of relationships. And as you begin to do this longer, you're going to move from being transactional to being more relational. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So with transactional relationships, we all have had those relationships where we feel like Oh, this person is just here to get something from me or this person is just doing just enough to get what they need from me and then once they get what they need from me they're moving on and they don't really engage me or don't talk to me or you have those relationships where you feel like the person is around they don't really care about what you think or what you need they're not really pouring into the relationship the way they need to or even if you both get something out of the relationship, right? Like by you partnering or doing whatever, this isn't just a romantic partnership or relationship, it's any kind of partnership. Even if there's a situation where you're partnering with somebody because you know they have something you need and vice versa, you have something they need and that happens, you're gonna learn though that there's so much more power and continuing that relationship and building it into something greater. So when I say move from transactional to relational, I just mean that instead of getting what I need from that person and moving on, I want to get to know that person, what motivated them to work with me, what they care about, what they value and what they need. Because when I develop those deeper relationships, then the relationship will produce more fruit. A person who you have a deeper relationship with, when it's time to call them up to do things again and again for you, then it's not as hard a sell because you've been cultivating a relationship all along. So you're gonna learn the importance of investing in people and knowing about people and caring about people. And you're gonna see how that pays off for you in the end. The third thing you're gonna learn is how to write better. Some people may disagree with me on this, but I'm gonna stand by this. So there are some people who naturally are amazing writers, who are really good, have always been great spellers, always been good with grammar. And then there are some people who've always struggled. And I hear this a lot when it comes to grant writing. People feel like I'm not a good writer, so I really feel like I need a grant writer because if not, then I'm not gonna be able to communicate well what I have to get across. But I believe that the process of explaining who you are, explaining your mission, and being able to write that down is a skill you have to learn and perfect if you want people to support you. There is no way you can get away with not being able to write down who you are, what you do, and to describe the things that you do and the impact of the work that you do in written form. You have to do that. You have to write website copy. You have to write one pagers. You have to write emails. You have to write all these things that are communicating the work that you do. And there are some people who will push back on me and say, well, you can hire somebody to do that. But what I'm saying is as the founder, you are the person who has to communicate that first. It comes from you. The idea came from you, the passion, the desire, all of the great things that happen as a result of your work and your mission come from your idea. And you're going to be put in a position where you have to speak for yourself 
where you have to write those things yourself, where you have to learn how to organize your thoughts in a, a better way yourself. Whether it's writing social media posts or writing emails or writing important PowerPoint decks or slides or pitches, it's gonna force you to be a better writer. Number four is very much connected to what I just talked about. And it's about how to communicate better just in general. I encounter a lot of founders who in the beginning will say, I don't want to be in the spotlight. I don't want to be the person that draws all the attention. I just want to do good work. That's not everybody, but I do encounter a lot of people like that. And I'm not too harsh with them in the beginning, but eventually we have the conversation that you have to be the face of the organization whether you want to or not. Because especially when you're starting from the beginning, who else is going to be the face of your organization and who else is better to communicate why you're doing this work, why it's so important, and to communicate and express the experiences and the perspectives that people need to know to understand your mission better. So the first step in communicating better is understanding your audience and listening and knowing what your audience needs from you. And that skill is a powerful skill that you're going to have to learn in order to communicate and get across what you need to get across to other people. Because here's the thing, you have something you want to communicate to somebody, but you can articulate it in the ways that you think people want to hear it or the ways that make sense to you. But the person on the receiving end may not receive the information the same way, may not want to hear the things that you're trying to communicate to them. And the only way you know how to draw that line or make that connection work is to understand what they want to hear from you or what they need from you. How do you do that? You listen to those people. You look for cues. You check them out. You assess them. You say to yourself, well, when I brought up those things, people responded in that way. Or when I was trying to communicate with this group of people, say like a group of funders, they really kept harping on the fact that they want to see data or harping on the fact that they want to see us leverage our partnerships in our local community. So I know now when I communicate with those folks, I'm going to be talking about our good outcomes. I'm going to be talking about our partnerships. It requires you in the process to learn and assess who you're talking to, who you're communicating with and pivoting to say what they want to hear from you, not necessarily what you want to say to them. And in a lot of ways, this is very subtle. It's not necessarily about what you want to say to them, but how you say it to them. And that's what kind of matters most. It's how you present it to them, how you frame it to them. And everybody is in different places. So a certain donor that you're trying to reach may resonate with certain words or different phrases than what you're used to saying. So one example is maybe you work in a space with national funders and they understand your industry. Y'all are good on the jargon. You don't have to dumb down anything to communicate what you're doing. But then you're trying to get people in your local community to support your organization, but they don't understand the words that you're using to describe the work that you do. And when they don't understand it and it goes over their head, they don't support. People don't get to things they don't understand. People don't respond well to things that they, they just don't get. So you learning how to communicate better really is rooted in your ability to be able to listen, to assess and pivot and understand who you're speaking with and what they need from you. The last one is my favorite one. You're going to learn how to be unapologetic about your mission. So in the beginning, you are probably tiptoeing for most people I've encountered. Are you going to tiptoe around your mission? You know you want to do something good, but you don't want to come off as too much, too aggressive, too passionate. Now, again, this may not be everybody, but this is what I've seen from a lot of founders that I've worked with. And you feel like your mission should speak for itself. A lot of people feel like, well, I shouldn't have to talk about my mission all the time because we already know that something's wrong. We already know that this needs to be addressed. So maybe you do something that everybody understands, hunger. We don't need to explain that there are people in our community that are hungry. Everybody should know that. So why do I have to keep talking about this or why do I have to keep sharing my message? People should see that I'm an organization that exists, that I'm new. They should automatically get that I need support and they should automatically throw their money at me. So I get that. I get how easy it is to think that way. But one thing you gotta understand is you cannot take for granted your 501c3 status. 
You cannot assume that just because you have that status, just because you're a nonprofit, that people are going to be led to support you. You have to be the sounding alarm to talk about the need in your community, to talk about the great work that you're doing or plan to do, and to talk about the great outcomes you're producing. It's on you. It's on you to share that information over and over and over again. And in the beginning, when you feel like you're saying the same things over and over again, or you're doing too much because everywhere you go, you're talking about your mission or you're sharing what you're doing. And in the beginning, it's gonna feel so uncomfortable because you're like, why do I have to keep talking about this? But eventually you're gonna learn that you have to be unapologetic about your mission. You have to remember that there are some people who are never gonna get help unless you speak up. There are some people who are not going to get what they need from you unless you speak up. And once you learn that, once you really, really start to process that, then it doesn't matter as much how you look to people when every time they see you, you're talking about your nonprofit. What I need you to understand is that most people, when they see you always talking about your nonprofit, are looking back and saying, wow, I'm inspired by what that person is doing. I'm inspired that they're sticking in the game. I'm inspired that they're actually helping somebody. And eventually, those people are gonna wonder what they can do to help you because they're so inspired by what you're doing. So you're gonna learn that it's not a bad thing to talk about your nonprofit over and over again. You're gonna learn that people actually want to hear good things, people actually want to know what you're doing, and it's your job and your responsibility to communicate that with them. I hope this helped. My job is to prepare you for this journey because I want you to be successful. I want you to win because if you are successful, there are so many people whose lives will be better as a result. So when you win, we all win. So my hope is that you take this information and you use it and you quite literally change the world. Thank you all for everything that you're doing. If you need help with your nonprofit, don't forget to visit me at bossonabudget.com. There are resources there to help you if you need help. There are also a bunch of videos on this channel that can help you navigate your startup process. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.